Weren't those songs wild? <laughs> well, the wildness continues, as does our southern adventure with a visit to Argentina. So uh, here we have the Revolucionaria uh, Torontes Brutal 2013. Uh, I'm really excited to open this bottle. If you're not familiar with Torontes, it's a white grape most famously grown in Argentina, uh, where usually you're getting your Malbecs from. Uh, it's tropical and lean, refreshing. It actually has a lot in common with the New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. It would be something I'd maybe pivot you to if you were at a restaurant and wanted to try something different than the New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs. And uh, I've mostly just had this grape as something that I would uh, easily quaff before a meal. I never really gave it much thought in particular, but this wine <laughs> is going to demand a little more thought. You can already tell why. This is an orange wine, uh, which just means that it's orange. That could have happened a lot of different ways. In this case, I did read up and uh, the grapes, the white grapes sit on the skins for a period of time. So it picks up pigment from the skin. This is also a 2013, so it has a little bottle age on it. White wines get darker with age, whereas red wines tend to lose their color. So that's another fun fact for you. Uh, let's give it a taste. Oh, wow. Well, that's not like any Torontis I've ever tasted. <laughs> it has a, uh, a, a tannin on the finish and a, a, an earthy aspect to it I would never expect, but it meshes really beautifully with the, um, the fruit forward peachiness. Um, I'm in a state famous for peaches, so it's interesting to have a wine that's known for having that flavor uh, component to it. Wow, I wanna spend some time with this wine. Uh, well, we will. So anyway, there are two things that make this wine, a few things that make this wine special. One is the skin contact. The other one is just the audacity to make it in this style. So I think Revolucionaria and the idea of revolution is very appropriate for a wine like this. Why is it revolutionary? Well in an area that can seem awash in sameness, like Malbec, uh, to uh, Matthias Michelini is the winemaker here. And he's decided to embrace what could be difficult about this grape and embrace what's difficult about the area and really reflect the place. And I, uh, I really respect that. And uh, I couldn't help but think about skin and revolution and where I'm uh, joining you from right now in Georgia. Uh, the South is a place that has had a uh, complicated history with skin that it continues to grapple with. And uh, I love the revolutionary artists from America that have been unafraid to tackle the difficult uh, racial legacy in the South and in the United States in the past and in the present. So I'm leading you into that territory right now. Uh, so the two artists I chose for you are artists that are familiar and even songs you probably already know uh, that embody this uh, unabashed courage to uh, sing the truth. <laughs> uh, I have first for you uh, Neil Young's Southern Man and the next will be Nina Simone's uh, Mississippi Goddamn. And just when I encounter a wine like this, when I encounter music like this, it's sort of a the highest expression for me of wine and song to which I have dedicated my life. Um, they move us through our senses and invite us to examine things that maybe we wouldn't otherwise and show us how pleasure can actually be a conduit to revelation. So <laughs> that's how I see it. So I'm going to enjoy this challenging wine and I invite you, even as you enjoy these songs, to uh, let yourself be challenged by them as well. So I will see you on the other side for more wine and song. Cheers.